Hello, today's topic is accessibility and we're going to go through a few key points first and then jump into a demo in a Power BI report of what to do and what not to do accessibility wise. And I'm going to do a screen reader demo too, so you can see how a screen reader behaves with a Power BI report. Megan Longoria is another really great resource for this. She's got a blog with a whole category on accessible design. I'm going to link that in the description for this video. Um, she's also got some themes. So here's her themes. She's got the files available on her website. And honestly, I think these are a lot prettier than the accessible themes that Microsoft has put in their product. So I like these a lot. And she's also got a checklist of things to remember to do when you are trying to create an accessible report. She also highlights something that I think is going to become more and more mainstream over the next few years, and that is designing for things like attention deficit disorder and autism or neurodivergence generally. And the cool thing about designing with these in mind is that it dovetails almost perfectly with general best practice design principles. So things like Stephen Few and Cole Nussbaumer Naflick with the Storytelling with Data. Um, these are authors that have published books that are really awesome on best practice report design. And the concepts in those books are in the exact same direction as this. So they're trying to help people focus on what's important. And as you could imagine, things like reducing the noise in your report, um, only showing as many decimals as you actually need to show, um, using color intentionally to draw attention to the things you want people to pay attention to, those are things that would help people with, say, attention deficit disorder, as well as everyone generally. So why not make it part of your your process and your habits and everyone will benefit. So some other things that you may have already heard that I'm not going to focus a ton on are things like making sure you use adequate font size for your text. So probably about size 10 or larger in Power BI, uh, making it an easy to read font, which honestly isn't that difficult in Power BI because you only have about 10 choices. And things like having high contrast colors on your text are really important. So we're going to jump right into the demo. One minute. So I'm going to jump on over to the demo. Be right back. Okay, so we're going to start here with tables. And for tables, essentially the gist of it is you want to not have your colors be overwhelming and loud. And at the same time, um, have something that is not just red or green that's differentiating your numbers. So for example, this column here is not accessible because it is only using red and green as the color differentiator. And also the, the contrast on the font with the background color is not amazing. So this black on red is borderline. Um, same thing with this one. So the yellow font obviously is almost never a good choice because the lack of contrast. So it's hard to read for people that are visually impaired. And with the icons, I, I don't super love the conditional formatting in tables for icons especially if you are using them on every single row. So they get really noisy. It gets kind of hard to, um, it's a little bit overwhelming, I guess. So, and at the same time, the icons don't give you an impression of size. So they don't tell you which things are extra super good versus a little bit good versus a little bit bad versus really bad. Whereas if you use a um, bar chart conditional formatting like over here, you get much more of an indication of size, which I like. And the way, if you're not familiar with the conditional formatting, I'll just go through this really quick. The menu for it, if you click on the, the column that you want to format, you can just go to conditional formatting and data bars, and then choose your positive and negative colors. And I am intentionally going with a kind of a blue green and a pink instead of a green and red here because there will be a little bit more of a color differentiation for people that are red green colorblind so you can shift your colors just slightly to make them in a, um, a more accessible direction without completely leaving behind the red and green and I'm using a light color here because what happens with these bars is that when you have a bar that takes up most of the width of the column it will overlap with the number and if you use a dark color with a dark font 
it's a problem because the contrast will be low. You can set rules to selectively change the font color as well. So you could do that if you wanted to. I like having lighter colors on the bars just because it is it feels less in your face. Another technique that I've seen is just making a copy of the same measure and having a column for the number be separate from the bars and then turning off the number display on the bar. So in here, there's a checkbox for show bar only. So you could turn that on, add a second column with a number, and that way you, it won't overlap at all. And that's just a little bit of a time savings thing versus creating rules around font color on the bars. And the other thing you'll note here is I am using icons to call out things that are very good and I'm using icons selectively so only calling out the um, over a certain threshold and this is a DAX measure if I go in and look at it. What I'm doing is I'm doing an if statement where I'm saying if the percentage is greater than 35% then use this unitar character and these unitar characters uh, I'll link a the reference I use for these, but essentially you can just scroll through and find one that you like to use and just stick the number in the unitar function. And then if that is not greater than 0.35, it's returning blank. So there's nothing here for these other ones. And what you do to get the, the column header to not uh, display here, what I've done is actually just set the font color on that to the same as your background color. So set the font color to white for this column. And I intentionally left the name of it in here so that screen readers would know what it is. So this is a flag column that is flagging with an icon. And you can set this up in, if you go to the visual tab under specific column, you can choose your field that you want to change the font color on and then click on apply to header and make that on and then apply to values off and then set it to white. And while we're in here, I'm going to show you the screen reader options. So the screen reader, if you go to the view tab and then turn on selection, under selection, there's a tab called tab order. And what tab order does is the screen reader, when it reads your report, is tabbing through all of your visual elements in your report and reading them. And what you can do here is you can reorder these to be in the order that you want them to be read in. So what happens is the, the items that you add to the page first end up at the top. And so oftentimes if you, you know, start adding a couple visuals and playing around with things, it, it almost never ends up in the order that you want it in. So you can drag to rearrange these. You can rename them. If you rename them here, it will change the title. Um, that you have on your visual. So if you have the title displayed, just keep that in mind. You can also hide things in here. So hide them from the screen reader. And you would want to do this with any kind of what I would call fluff visuals. So things like this line. I've turned off the visibility of this line because I don't want the screen reader to read the fact that there's a line there. It doesn't serve any purpose, especially if you're using shapes behind your visuals as kind of a frame. You want to turn those off because you don't want those being read, and especially not first before you get to the actual numbers in your report. Okay, so let's flip over to our charts page. So the charts, I've got a couple examples here um, just to give you the gist of it, but essentially if you're designing for, particularly for neurodivergence, having something that is a very busy chart, meaning it's got the grid lines, all the data labels, and a lot of color going on is bad. So you don't want to do that. And in best practice design, generally, you want your color to be meaningful. So you want your color to be highlighting something specific, not just a, these are my categories, each one is a different color sort of thing. You want the color to have some meaning. And so... What I've done on the right hand side here is I've used color to highlight the category with the biggest growth in the latest year. This is one of those things that's kind of easier said than done in Power BI. I'm hoping that Microsoft puts a little bit more development into this area as far as dynamic, dynamically highlighting elements in charts with color because you can do this, you can do conditional color formatting in a, say, a bar chart as long as you don't have something in the legends well. Once you put it in the legends well, it becomes a static assignment. So I'll show you what I mean 
So if we open up columns here, you can see that these are static colors. There's just a color drop down. There's no FX button to make a conditionally formatted color on these. But I'm hoping that that is something that gets added at some point in the future. Okay, so on to our line charts. And um, generally speaking, you want to avoid line charts that have a ton of lines, especially when they all have different colors. The busyness is also a problem, so people don't know what to focus on. And so designing um, for drawing drawing attention to a specific thing in your line charts is a good idea. So in this case, what I've done is I've used the grouping ability. So for any of your fields, you can create um, kind of they're called buckets or groupings. So if you go in and edit this, you can see I've made the biggest categories into values and then put everything else into an everything else category. And that just reduces the number of buckets, the amount of noise in your visual. If you're not trying to call out something in that everything else category, then that makes sense. Um, but if you're trying to pinpoint something that is um, underperforming, then obviously you would want to um, highlight different things. So we're using the groups in the legend here. So we've got an everything else bucket, and then we're using color to highlight the line that I want to stand out. So the product with the most growth. And next, I want to just go through something with the page view settings. So under this view tab here, you have some options of fit to page, fit to width, and actual size. And what these do is when you publish them, those stick, so they will stay to whatever you have for that particular page. And the I'm going to minimize this so you can see what happens. If you have it set to fit to page, it's fitting both the height and the width. And Power BI being somewhat responsive, it's going to automatically resize your visuals according to what's happening with your page. So whether somebody has a big screen or a small screen or whether it's the window is. Um, and what Power BI is doing is it's trying to automatically resize your visuals and fonts based on the available space. So this fit to page is going to do that for both the width and the height. So when I resize this, it is shrinking everything down and there's a point at which it becomes not really readable you get to see my super awesome desktop image kind of cute this little mushrooms size of it scales like that and the difference between these two is that fit to width will only do that when you are changing the width of the window so this way it'll resize but if you resize from the bottom It will not so it'll just scroll kind of like a web page and I kind of like this because people are used to scrolling through web pages so like if you are trying to fit things on a page and you are running out of space in my opinion people might disagree with me on this but in my opinion it's better to use this fit to width and have people scroll up and down than it is to try and shrink things down to be um, fitting in your area and then this last one is actual size. And what actual size does is it just doesn't resize at all. So it'll just create a scroll bar in either direction. So if you're really concerned about your font shrinking on smaller screen sizes, then this is a legitimate option. And um, the, the scroll bar might be a problem. I don't know. It just depends on what's going on in your report. OK, so now let's jump to the screen reader. I'm going to open up. Eight. Clickable main landmark accessible design, tables, report zoom to 161%, report zoom to 160%. Okay, so if I start tabbing, List. Show keyboard shortcuts. it opens up the file menu here and I can see the keyboard shortcuts if I hit enter. Keyboard shortcuts. Heading level two, two shortcuts. There's Go a lot of noise in here. I'm going to close this so that it stops. Dialog button. Application. Mm. List. Show keyboard shortcuts yeah, button. Okay, okay. The thing with the keyboard shortcuts is that they use the F keys. And if you're using any kind of modern keyboard, oftentimes the F keys will automatically be set to using the um, hotkeys of your keyboard. So usually like a mute or a play button or whatever. And it took me a while to figure out how to turn this off. I couldn't get to keep the F keys and like F6 or whatever to work. There's the software that comes with your keyboard or with your computer. Um, if you've got a specifically branded computer, will often let you disable that. So I'm going to use the skip to main content here. Skip to main text box. 
So we've got a text box and these text boxes, you can add titles to these just like you can any other visual and they won't display unless you've turned on the display for the title, which is kind of handy because then it'll give the person an idea of what's going to be in the text box, especially, especially if it's a um, longer paragraph of text. And if you hit enter, it'll read whatever it is that you have selected. Accessible design tables. So I'm going to keep tabbing. Red X, do not do this image. So it's highlighted on, uh, you can't see the outline, but it's highlighted on one of the images right now. And the images let you add alt text in their settings in Power BI. So if you just go into the same panel that you do all the other settings changes for a visual, one of them in there is alt text and you can set alt text that describes the picture for somebody that can't see it. Sales variance grouping. And now I've got my table selected. If I hit enter on that, it'll go into the table. Document, table. Salesperson can be sorted column header row one. Salesperson can be sorted column two. This is where I think having a default sort that is meaningful is helpful to a person because it helps them get the information that's important out of the visual without reading the entire thing because it would take a long time to read an entire table visual, especially one that has 10,000 rows or whatever. If I go through here, I can use the down arrow to read the values. Amy Alberts wrote and then right to read the formatting row three, not accessible column three. So it's reading the column title, the value, and it's talking about the conditional formatting. So the conditional formatting can get kind of noisy for screen readers. And that happens for the bar charts too. If I escape out of here and go over to the bar chart, you can see what it sounds sales like. Variance group. Yes, check sales variant document. Take green heart row two flag column two. And it does know that's a heart, which is interesting. I didn't do anything special to get it to understand that, so it just must be the name of the, the Unitar character. Amy L, 65% data bar, 48% row 2 bar conditional formatting gives a size impression in addition to good slash bad column 4. <laughs> that's, the, that's the name of the column title, that's why it's reading that about it. But So you can still use cross-filtering in these cases by selecting that thing. Um, with the enter key. Amy the thing is, is that in order to see what it is cross filtering, you have to escape out of it, which interestingly does not remove the cross filtering. So I expected that when I pushed escape to remove the cross filter, but it didn't, which is kind of cool. So it looks like cross filtering is somewhat accessible. I don't know that they would necessarily know that it's been cross filtered if they weren't able to see it, but um, they could tab through and find that being applied. And now if we want to get to our other pages, we can Power BI report section. escape to the top level here Text box. and then do control F6. Show slash hide pane button. So that gets us to the filter pane where people can select filters at the page level or report level. Report zoom to and that's the zoom. Banner landmark app launcher menu button collapsed sub menu. And the top level menu. Home one of main landmark hide the pages pane button. And now we're in the pages pane. So if I hit enter on this, that'll collapse the it. Page. Hide the pages pane button. <laughs> and if I do pages tab, control. Figma dash look tab one of twelve. Tab gets me into the sub menu here, and then I can use the up and down arrow to go to a different tab. Accessible design charts tab three. Adventure works Power BI document blank. Main landmark, pages tab control, accessible design, charts, tab selected 3 of 12. So if I do escape now to get out of this sub menu, and then tab, accessible nope, design. I can't escape. How about control F6? Application. All right, here we go. Text box. Red X do not, this chart is too busy, no focal point, lack of contrast on data labels, color has no meaning, graphic, plot area list. All right, so I've got the data selected. Now, if I do enter again, it should let me select something inside the visual to read. Fiscal year 2019. Subcategory, groups, road bikes. Sales amount $584,081. Total $962,717. Not selected, 5 of 16. And if you've got really big numbers here, it might get a little bit tedious to go through and read them all because numbers like 10,560,456 are kind of mouthy. 
but we can tab through these. Subcategory, fiscal year, fisc oops, plot, this chart is too busy. No, spaghetti chart. Go down to this one. If I go into here, plot area, fiscal year, and in again. Subcategory, bib shorts. Sales amount $43,421. Not selected one of one. It looks like it's starting me on the first legend value, whatever that first data point is for the first legend value. It's not starting me at the beginning of the axis. So you can go through these. You can cross filter by hitting enter again. All right, so you get the idea there. We also have, I'm gonna turn this, this off now. And there's another thing you can do with the screen readers, which is uh, Alt Shift F11 with a visual selected, and that'll give you a table format of the visual to read through. The other thing we have going on here is the contrast color settings. So you have some options um, for visually impaired people that are extra super high contrast. So you can tab through these and see what these look like. And there's one of them here that's white. So this white one works a lot better for anything that has an image as the background. So what if, what we can do if I go over to like this one here, I did a video on how to set this up the other day and this one is not going to adapt to the high contrast colors that are based on a black background because the background color is not going to change here because it's an image. So if I select this one, it won't work very well. But the white high contrast still does work pretty well. So keep that in mind if you're dealing with some kind of fancy background image for your report that having the background of your visuals be something that works with one of the high contrast color settings so either black or white is beneficial for accessibility and that is everything i have for you today if you think i've missed anything please let me know in the comments and as always thank you for watching